All right. Hey, everybody. Wow, we got a nice crowd here, which is very cool. Um, my name is Jordan Rudis. My friend over there is Marco Parisi. And uh, we're so happy to be here. We uh, love what we do. We love playing keyboards. We spent a lot of time playing the seaboard. Uh, one of our neighbors over here is kind of a new next generation keyboard. But <clears throat> let's face some realities here. I take the Korg Kronos with me on the road with Dream Theater for every show that I do. It's the heart of my system. Uh, I depend on it. Um, it is like, to me, like the mothership. It's the, uh, it's all the sounds. You know, as the keyboard player in Dream Theater, I'm responsible for the keyboard sounds, but I'm also responsible for all the orchestral sounds, all the sounds of like any kind of band instruments, all the effects, everything that's not a guitar, bass, or drums, or James Labrie singing basically is coming off of my keyboard. And I use the one keyboard uh, for about 96 or 97 percent of what's going on. So the Kronos is extremely powerful, capable keyboard. <clears throat> it's never been a better time to be a keyboardist. And uh, if you're out there playing live and in the studio, you definitely have to check out the Korg Kronos because it's uh, of all the choices that are out there for the keyboard that I would use in my situation. It's the one that I love. And a lot of people say to me, why don't you use like, you know, main stage or one of those kind of things that, you know, you have a controller and the computer. And I have a lot of respect for that technology. I think it's awesome. But I still really believe in the idea of having an instrument that is kind of like yours. You know, you want to have a personal relationship with your instrument that you're playing. And I feel somehow if the computer's over there and I have a controller keyboard, it's not the same. I know the guys at Korg, you know, I per personally know them and I know their way of thinking and the reason they make these. And from the ground up, they're made to be beautiful, you know, intelligent, musical instruments. And I really feel like I'm connected with it. So, um, yeah, so that's what we're doing. So I'm here today. Um, for Korg, but very much for my very good friend, Kurt Ader, who uh, is probably the world's leading sound designer. And he has dedicated himself to Korg instruments because they're so powerful. And uh, I'm going to be showing off uh, mostly his orchestral library, some selections from his orchestral library. And uh, I, I recently met Kurt, and uh, besides being a nice guy and you know, turning me on to his sounds, I got to tell you that when I went into the studio in these last writing sessions with Dream Theater, I've been in the studio for the last two months working, I kind of escaped to come here. But I was so inspired and the guys were so inspired by the sounds. Every time I would call one of them up, we were all like, oh my God, that's amazing. So um, I really felt like I wanted to, you know, I knew I was coming here and I said to Kurt, you know, I'm going to be at Mesa. Let me go and let me tell people about your sounds and have a chance to play them a little bit. So uh, that's kind of like the focus of this particular demo. And my buddy here, Marco, who is one of the world's leading keyboard players, offered to kind of help with this presentation because it's a little bit improvised. And uh, we're going to depend on our perfect pitch to kind of like go off of each other, which, which we do. You know, that's, that's what we do. So um, let's, let's dive into it, and I'll show you some things about some of the sounds. We'll play a little bit and have a good time. So the sounds range from like very like expressive and intense to things that are a little bit more quiet. And um, I'll get started and show you some of the, uh, you know, maybe one of the big orchestral type of sounds. So here we go. These are, these are just usually programs. If you're familiar with the Kronos, they can be like single programs. Um, so it's pretty, pretty crazy. Here we go.
I, I remember when I first played that sound in the studio and John Petrucci was like, oh my God, what's going on there? It's very, uh, you know, I told him I was going to bring in some orchestral sounds, but I, I don't think he was prepared for all that. So um, let's move, it, move along. I'll stay in the string category a little bit and then I'll ask my man over there to join me a little and he'll uh, do some improvising around it. Um, you want to give that a go? Okay. So you can see, even when playing a, you know, a string patch in Kurt's library, which I'll tell you is the K-Pro library, and it's available through the Korg online store. If you want to check it out, if you have a Kronos and you want to play orchestral sounds, 
you have to check out Kurt's library because I am not kidding. This guy is unbelievable and he makes incredible sounds and I encourage you to, to check it out and listen to the sounds online. And of course, you'll hear more of them here. But I wanted to say that a sound like this one that we were just playing over here, many of his sounds are very, very dynamic. And if you're a keyboard player, you'll, you'll appreciate it immediately. So I can play very quietly. And as I kind of increase my touch, it really does speak more and it speaks faster. And there's nothing I love more than a sound that's orchestral, but that's playable. Because I don't want to sit there and edit every note. I'm not that kind of a player, a musician. I like to, pl I like to find a string sound I can really play. So this one. So one sound, I mean, you kind of like, it just does what you want it to do. So uh, I want to share with you um, something completely different. So I'm, play so I'm in the studio, right? And I'm playing all these different sa orchestral sounds. And uh, everybody's enjoying them, and they're all great. And I'm thinking, oh, this guy, Kurt, he makes great sounds. I'm feeling really good about it. And then all of a sudden, we're talking. We wanted to have something that was just really, really, like, uh, huge, but not necessarily strings. So... Um, we were thinking about what kind of sound do we want. So we said, oh, yes, we need a pipe organ. So I'm thinking, you know what? I, I remember uh, Kurt did send me some pipe organ sounds, but I wasn't paying much attention to them at first because I thought, oh, the guy makes great string sounds and that kind of thing, but the pipe organ is probably not, you know, it's nothing. But I loaded it in and I started going through them and I hit this one patch and everybody in the room was like, oh, my God, what is that? And I felt like I was in the biggest like, cathedral in, in the universe. So uh, I'll play you uh, that sound because I think it's really, really special. We have a volume pedal operator over here, and that's why I had no sound. Guilty as charged. Too expressive. <laughs> Try that again. I was all set for a big emotion. I heard nothing. I almost start to sweat when I play that sound. It's so intense. <laughs> I love it. it. It definitely gets the job done. So, um, yeah, and, and the beauty of his library and his whole concept, I don't know what his tricks are. He, he started to explain it to me, but he's got his own thing with microphones and all these things that he does, very passionate. Um, 
But there's a very wide range of sounds. And I also needed a really nice harp as well in the studio. So I discovered this very beautiful one. I'll check, uh, uh, we'll check it out. It's not quite as intense as the organ. So take a deep breath, let's relax, and I'll play the harp for you. Thanks. A sound that really took me by surprise was um, a combination of what he called an electric cello and strings. And I didn't expect the electric cello to be kind of what it was, but it's turned out it's one of my favorite sounds. Um, so I'll play a little bit of that for you now as well.
let, let's hear it from Marco Parisi, who's just following this. We didn't rehearse this at all. This guy's amazing. Put your hands together. I just, I just want to say one thing about Kurt's library, so that, and also about the Korg Kronos. I've been raving about the library because I'm very excited about it, and I just got out of the studio when I was using it a lot. So uh, it's fresh on my mind. But one of the reasons that um, he does these orchestral libraries for the Kronos is because the Kronos is an immensely powerful instrument that has something called wave sequencing on it. And wave sequencing allows him to do something like where you press a note, like if I just play... Well, that's a choir sound, but... Da, 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 da. Something like this. And every time I hit that note, even though it's the same key, it can cycle through a wave sequence and play a slightly different sound for every time the note goes down. So that's what makes it sound so realistic. And that's really hard to do on anybody else's platform. But the Kronos allows you to do that. You can set up these strings of events that, that can be assigned to one key. So it really creates this amazing kind of, or, you know, perfect for orchestral or other things that need to be very natural. So uh, that's the reason that he, um, that he does his libraries for the Kronos. And I'm happy about it because I have a Kronos. And uh, if you don't, you should definitely put your hands on one around the room because, uh, again, I traveled the whole world uh, you know, with the Korg Kronos. Before that, I traveled the world with the Oasis. But when they slowed down on making those a bit, I was freaking out because I was like, what am I going to do? I didn't know what keyboard I was going to play. And then I got a call from one of my buddies at Korg, and he said, don't worry, J Jordan, just relax. We're coming out with something else, and it'll be compatible. So, um, yeah, kind of a happy, uh, happy thing. So, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Let's do something. I want to show off the piano a little bit. So maybe you'll, uh, you can be my orchestra for the, yeah. for the piano thing. Okay, you want to start with some kind of lovely uh, pad idea? Yeah. Let's make something else up for the people.
one of the things we're learning to do very well while we do these, these MESA conventions, he and I, is we're learning to make shorter compositions and knowing exactly when to end. So, um, that's right. So if you want to learn about keyboard technology, you're in the right place, the ins and outs of the Kronos. If you want to learn how to improvise, you can ask Marco or me. And um, so I think we'll, we're almost getting ready to close, <clears throat> but I want to play you this choir sound that I love too and maybe something to close it out. So um, yeah, check out this choir sound. This is, the, the piano sound I played is actually the new Berlin Grand that Korg has as part of their library. The other sounds I've been playing are part of Kurt's Capro library. Thank mm -hmm. you.
So, um, yeah, I want to thank you all for coming and uh, checking out myself and Mr. Marco Parisi. I am Jordan Rudis. We are at Korg, home of one of the most fantastic keyboard instruments on the planet, my favorite, the Korg Kronos. And I'll leave you with a thought. If you need the world's best orchestral sounds, especially if you have a Kronos, you owe it to yourself to go check out Kurt Ader's library. It's the K-Pro library. He has two private collections available on the Korg store. The private collections are like the best of, and many of the sounds we used are on those collections. So my friends, we will see you on the road. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming.